Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, great to have you with us on the program today. Monster of the Sandbarans from fiction author Tony Karanji is part adventure, part mystical, a story about what happens to a man who is volatile and destructive, pestilent and pernicious, too bitter in the extreme, and vain to abide his heart. A story about how nature heals itself. Tony was turned on to fiction writing as a child, as an adult pursuing studies in math, earning a bachelor's and a master of science in public health and statistics. He enjoys travel, spent three years in Rome, currently living on a sailboat in Miami. It's his first book, the must-read Monsters of the Sundarbans. Tony Karanji with us on This Week in America. Tony, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thanks. It's great to be here. Living on a sailboat, we have to do a whole program just talking about that. That's always been sort of like the nice way to live life, and that's how Tony's been able to do it. But we're talking specifically about the book today. Uh, Sandarbans, am I saying that correctly? Sunderbonds. Sunderbonds. Okay, I got the accent in the wrong place. Sunderbonds. Let's talk about where the idea for this book came from. There's so many elements that you deal with in the book and so well written. Where did this idea come from? Actually... It, it came when I was living in Rome, and I saw a YouTube video of a tiger jumping on, uh, attacking a man on an elephant, and that's that's where the that from that just that just that little video is where the idea came from to write the book. Well, it's interesting because as they go after the man eater, the tiger, they decide to go off in elephants. And you explain there's a there's a what a technical advantage when they're looking in this case for the man eater uh, to be up on an elephant. Well, as you know, as I understand it anyway, as I've learned, is that they hunt in India, they in Bangladesh, and they hunt tigers on the backs of elephants because. The, and, and, and they beat the they, they beat drums that the tigers find offensive. It hurts their ears, and they're able to to literally herd them, herd them like cattle into a certain spot, and surround it and kill it. So I suppose that's what they were trying to do to this tiger. But the tiger in uh, ch- changed the script, and he tacked one of the men on the on the elephant and i guess got away i don't know maybe they got him later but um i just thought well that would make make a great story and it is a great story we're talking about uh monster or the sun darbins did i get the accident in the right place that time sunderbond sunderbond okay well, i'm getting a little closer it's a 20 minute interview by the end i should be able to get to that i gotta move the accent uh, down there uh, in the book, we have this 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 great chase, the man eater. I'm talking about, and talk about the damage that he's inflicted on the community. He's struck and taken like close to 400 lives, and the government is like, okay, now we've got to go out and, and we've got to capture this this tiger. Yeah, I think the the, the story is that, yeah, it's about the damage that the that the tiger does to humans, but it's also the what the humans don't realize they're doing to the tigers yes and more to the jungle and to nature itself and this tiger is just a um a pushback by nature and i mentioned a story about yeah a story about how nature heals itself we really see that unfold don't we well yeah from from the tiger's perspective too uh, we don't really see what you know we don't see what we do to nature we don't see the consequences of our actions. We, we don't feel them. Nature does that. You know, where do the animals go whenever they build up a new uh, a new development? They have to run somewhere. But in this uh, in this story, I also understand that that tigers don't really like humans in their diet. They really prefer not to have humans, but they confuse them with other other types of prey. And I think I even had something in the book there where I, I mentioned that tigers only eat humans if they have to. It's just not enough fat on us. It depends what part of the country here in the United States they go to. But, yeah, that that is true. They would rather not eat us, and we, of course, would rather not have them eat us. So it, it works both ways. But but from the book, we're able to see this this delicate balance and how that's uh, – uh, how we sort of throw it out of kilter. And you think about that because as a new subdivision comes in, we have animals and wildlife that have been there that are no longer there, and they have to go somewhere. The book is Monster of the Sunderbond. I get that? Am I closer? 
Closer. Cinder okay. Bonds. <laughs> Cinder Bonds. Okay. Make a plural and it will be there. Tony Karangi, our guest on the program. That's C A R A N G I. His website is Tony Karangi, C A R A N G I dot com. Books available at uh, Amazon. Information on the book is well available at the. Uh, uh, at his website, and you'll link on by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Talk about Peter Harmon. Peter is a really interesting character who comes in, and he sort of lives to kill things, and he's brought in to try to find the man-eater. This is a very complicated individual, isn't it? He, he um, well, he, he thinks that he has a lot of things figured out. Um... That's how I see. He thinks that he's, he's he thinks he has things figured out as maybe a lot of us do, and he learns. I think through, he's ignorant. I think he learns a lot too late. Yes. And at, at, to his peril, he find he learns too late that um, things are a little different than, than than they appear to be. And um, but yes, he is a he's not he's not necessarily a nice guy. Um, maybe you wouldn't want him living next door to you, but, um, he's, I don't know, maybe that, maybe he is the best or the worst of all of us, but he he certainly, yeah, he certainly goes into the Sunderbonds after the tiger with a certain idea that he's, you know, he's doing the right thing. Talk about developing that character and developing the characters that are in the book based on any, uh, Anybody in real life, you know, like a character like Peter or just uh, from your imagination? Well, Peter, yeah, Peter Harmon comes from my imagination uh, more than Satis, the uh, the old Indian guy. He comes, he's reminds me of an old friend of mine in Atlanta. And um, we used to have a lot of conversations at the coffee house and I dedicated the book to him. And that, um, so he, so, so that character does come from, you know, from my memory. What at was, least part of it. Yeah. What was this process like for you in, in writing this book? This, uh, uh, this fascination with writing goes back to an early age. Well, let's talk about that. I understand this was a babysitter that sort of spawned this interest in you in, in writing. It took a while, got your college degrees, the whole thing. And, uh, worked in the real world for a little bit, but what, uh, what was it that, that made you decide, okay, this is the story I want to tell? Well, I had written only one short story, and that was by assignment many years ago on a compulsory course in junior college, but, and I hadn't written since, and so I don't know. That's a good question. Where did it come from? But I, I saw that, you know, I saw that video, and I decided to write a story, and so I did, and yeah, I don't know. I mean, the it was not hard to come by. the The words just flew out onto the page. That was not, you know, that was not a difficulty. Did you start uh, with start with an outline or just sort of a basic idea and went from there? Yeah, no, that was it. I just went from a basic idea and went from there. No outline, no nothing. I just, I th- at least this. I don't know if it'll work that way every time, but. <laughs> I don't know if it worked that way the next time, but 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 it just went from an outline. It was almost like let's. It's almost like as if I were reading a book myself. Actually, so I say let's see, let's see where this goes. Well, it works for you, and so often you talk to writers, and they have a very structured outline. They spend months working on the outline, and then get frustrated many times along the way because the story really isn't fitting into that outline. So I think there's merit, especially if uh, your mind works in that direction just to let it unfold as you're thinking of the story as though you were sitting there with somebody else's book and, uh, and go from there. Well, if you're doing it on your own, that's, uh, yeah, that's, I think you can, you know, um, be, I, I guess I should, should, I left out that I, I did write for, uh, for, for financial magazine at one time. And, um, I was, my, my job was to write, you know, technical things about stocks and, um, in bonds and those kinds of things. Well, mostly stocks, bank stocks. And I, I, I learned, people told me, and it was reported to me anyway, that I could make these boring things even seem interesting. And so by writing for that blog, so that's how I, I guess, I, I guess it was my segue into, into writing. And so that's how I tried. That, 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 that's how I made a, um, 
you know, a, a leap into into pure fiction. But so, so my job was to, to, to make take something that was very boring and make it interesting. Well, in and, in your story, you were able to take nothing there is boring, but everything is interesting, and you're able to take these other themes and sort of weave them in without hitting us over the head to think about these issues, the issues this this balance that I talked about. But but they're very real issues, and you break them down so it's something that that's we can all relate to and enjoy as as we're reading the book. Well, thank you for saying that. Um, I, I I think there's. Um, yeah, there, I, I mean, there's, you know, Peter Harmon, there's some, some, I guess, the term wasn't around at the time, but I, when I wrote it, I guess, you, it, toxic masculinity was, you could call, you could call him that. Yes. Um, there's some of that there, um, as I say, but that's his, you know, that that's, that's his crux, that's his, you know, he has to figure that out, and he better figure it out quickly, um, you know. I, I think the tiger has everyone. The tiger has everyone figured out. It may take him a while to do it, but it's it's the tiger that figures things out. Um, he makes some mistakes along the way, but eventually does figure it out. Yeah, um, it's interesting because you think, okay, they're closing in. They're going to get the tiger, and the tiger suddenly turns course, and all of a sudden he's the one that's sort of on the offensive there. So it's interesting that that battle that that goes back and forth, isn't it? Well, that's what I know about, you know, I mean, that's what I know from nature channels and those things from tigers. Is, yeah, when you're when you're hunting them, they are also hunting you. They're very intelligent and they're very crafty. So that's even a normal tiger will do that. Um, so I, I tried to play up on that. I tried to play up. I tried to, you know, make that battle, extend that battle even more and make it um, even three dimensional. And um, and even there, you know, I, I don't know. Even into the into the into the end, Peter Harmon still thought he was going to win, no matter what. He could defeat all odds, and the Tigers thought that he was going to win. So it was just, you know, I, I I just had to figure out who how how that was going to end. What was a natural way for it to end? And I didn't even figure it out. It just it just sort of put itself down there. Well, it makes for an enjoyable read. Monsters of the Sandermans. You getting that better? Sunderbonds. Sunderbonds. Okay. Oh, geez. I was so close the last time. I should have quit there and not just spelled it out this last time. Sunderbonds. Uh, Monsters of the Sunderbonds. Uh, Tony Garangi with us on the program. It's a, it's an excellent read. You're also working on another series. Well, uh, uh, another book, which is a series. Talk about this, the Gladiator series. And this is, uh, I understand, uh, fiction and it's in four books. Well, right, yeah, four books or four different chapters, yeah, f four different books. It covers four lifetimes of, of, of two people who meet and are reincarnated on their way to enlightenment. It is based on the astonishing principles of A Course in Miracles. The principle of A Course in Miracles is basically this, that the universe isn't here. And when I heard that, when I heard, so, when, it, when it was explained to me that the universe isn't here, I said, that is exactly how it, because I'm an atheist, but this was even better than that. This explained that the universe is an illusion. I said, well, that's just got to be true. So I began studying that. And I guess this goes a lot back to my, you know, writing and the, you know, trying, trying to make, uh, you know, financial pages look interesting. So I'm taking a concept that's not mine and trying, that's not fiction and trying to make fiction out of it. Yeah, Tony Karanji, our guest on the program. His website, by the way, is Tony Karanji. That's C A R A N G I dot com. Uh, the book is available, of course, there at Amazon, Barnes and Noble by going to our website thisweekinamerica.us. You can uh, link on directly. So, how is that series coming? Is that are you close to, to publication with that? I I think well, I'm done with them. Actually, I'm done with them. I'm just just doing revisions myself. Um, I'm doing the 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 first book is called The Gladiator. Um, it, it is the second book is called The Infinite Loop. The third is um, Lost, and the last one is The Last Pope, and they take place over thousands of different years. So um, The Gladiator takes place two thousand years ago. The Infinite Loop takes place in the time of quantum computing. So there's a broad range of lifestyles. And 
yes, uh, it's almost done. Um, it's, well, I'm just revising. Let's put it that way. I'm revising and still finding spelling and grammatical errors. And um, But that, that's how close it is. Well, looking forward to that series as well. And the book we're talking about, Monst- uh, Monsters, Monster of the Sundermans. Uh, Tony, right. if, well, I know if it would talk long enough, I'd be able to get that or at least get pretty close to that. Tony Karanji, our guest on the program. Who are some of the influences, some of the, the people that you like uh, to write that you feel, boy, this they, they, they really touch me. They take a subject, they make it interesting. I enjoy their style. Are there any that that you would fall in that category for you? Oh, I, I don't. You know, I don't read a lot of books, believe it or not. I, 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 I guess short Edgar Allan Poe. I guess short short stories. That's where I got started with. Uh, the first book um, that I, I think the most amazing book ever written was The Exorcist. Oh yeah. And I, I think that was the most. Yeah, that was that was just the most amazing book. Um, and of course, The Godfather. I mean, nothing to me. The Godfather uh, is. I don't know. The Godfather, at least, was was something. I, I, between Godfather and Exorcist, I don't know. I don't know, but I, I, th- those are books that um, I feel like I need to read every two or three years. Um, Lolita. Lolita was a great read for me. Um, the kind of book that made you think. It, like when I put that book down, I it, I, I still thought about it. Um, and just now, I finished with that. I, I uh, the the Great Santini. Oh yes, with yes. The Great Santini, which was another book, I, I, I put it down, but I'm still thinking. I'm not going to read it again right away, but I'm still thinking about it. So, you know, some books do that to me. I, what, I'm what's interesting, of- all of those, of course, uh, were quite visual. They did they did movies. Your book is visual. As I'm reading that, any possibility you'd like to pursue making this into a a, a movie of some type? Well, unfor- you know, I, I, I called, yeah, I, I, I called the publisher. I said, it's actually, I think it's already been done. There is a movie. I'm, 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 I'm shocked. I think there's a, an Indian movie out there. It's about a hunt for tigers where soldiers go in, modern day soldiers, and they go in and they hunt for the, for the tiger, which, which is, I, 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 I almost feel like it's plagiarism, but yeah, there's a movie, there is a movie out there that follows my, my, outline at least the trailer according to the trailer follows my outline completely it even has the one you know the the people who are trying to save the tiger and but instead of being uh, a wise uh, a, a wise indian man that's uh, you know it's a hot young girl who's trying to save the tiger it's a modern thing it probably sell better in the movies but yeah so i think so i think it would be made i think it's already been made into a movie well, it's unfortunate you didn't get credit for it, or more importantly, a check for it <laughs> with with yeah. the idea. Because I I haven't seen it, but I like your story better. The way it unfolds, it's quite visual. It makes it such an enjoyment as you're reading it. The book is Monster of the Sundermans. Uh, Tony Karangi, our guest on the program. That's C A R A N G I. His website is TonyKarangi.com. You can link on to that directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Of course, the book is available at uh, at Amazon. Tony, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. We'll look forward to, uh, to touching base again with the Gladiator series. Thank you. Excellent job with this book. Looking forward to, uh, to many more from you. Thank you for taking the time to talk about it. Great. Thanks, Rick. It has been a pleasure. So Once again, the book. Monster of the Sundermans, Tony Karanji, our guest on the program, book available at Amazon.com, of course, at Tony's website. Link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us.